Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. So I am at the shop um, working on stuff, which is what I do all the time. That's what I totally do to relax. Some people go to the bar, some people go to the beach, some people go exercise at the gym. This is totally, this is my gym right here. I'm just relaxing. Um, so just got done working on the disgusting. The, the list on this thing is very small now. There's not much left to do to this thing. Um, it should be leaving very soon. Um, Judas 57 is so close to being done. I even torqued the uh, lug nuts and cleaned up the caps and put them on, cleaned up the wheels, the exhaust is done, the trans coolers in, motor, tranny, uh, e-brakes are hooked up. This thing's ready. I have to customize the seat a little bit for her. She is a tall lady and isn't very comfortable in the car. I moved the center, I moved the uh, steering column for her. We'll touch more on that later, but more stuff to do to that. Um, what else? We got new visitors in here. We're gonna have a bunch of visitors in here tomorrow. Um, the show I'm shooting is going to be working on five or six cars that belong to a bunch of different people and they're all going to come in at the same time so all these cars are going to go away so I can work on all these other cars. Everything from uh, just old Cutlasses to Volkswagens. They're all going through here in the next couple of weeks. Um, that is an LS motor over there for a build. This is actually for that 69 I'm doing. Uh, it's another LT4. Um, yeah, that is the car. The body's actually being acid dipped. I'll post some pictures of that um, on the next video I do. Um, we're doing a COVID safety right here. Um, the production crew left that here. I don't know what it's for. Um, what else is going on? A bunch of new banners, which are kind of cool. Some of these are cool. Some of them are, I mean, I think one of these was built the same. One of these magazines is from the same year and month I was born. Uh, yeah, I can't see the dates offhand, but, oh yeah, 1962, that thing's older than me, 69, 66, so yeah, there's some good ones up there, but, um, oh yeah, so anyway, the only reason I'm doing this video is, so, uh, I like old stuff, um, the story starts, so what had happened was, um, back when I was younger, well, all this came to mind the other day when uh, somebody asked me about Tucker. Now, uh, I had a house in Lake Havasu, and I remember there was a Tucker Museum there, which uh, I think it was just some guy who had a Tucker or part of a Tucker or something and, and uh, wanted some place to hang out, so he just built himself a little Tucker Museum. Somebody, I never saw the car, but somebody told me that it had a 429 Ford in the front of it, so somebody had cut up a Tucker. Or found a Tucker that was already gutted for parts and it made it run and drive. I'm sure nobody cut up a Tucker. They made like 40 of them or something. So the deal is, well, first of all, if you ever get an opportunity to uh, rent or uh, stream the movie Tucker, um, you should. Tucker is a great story about a, uh, uh, a car that was cutting edge in 19, uh, I want to say, 48, just after the war. Um, and the gig was that it was, um, first of all, it rear-engined before Volkswagens were driving around. Uh, I think it was a pancake six-cylinder, air-cooled engine in the back, which that's cutting edge for back in that day. And um, what else did he have? He had like padded dashboards before anybody was padding dashboards, because back in the 50s, um, 40s and 50s, there was a steel dashboard generally painted the color of the interior or the color of the car. If you got into an accident, you left a dent in the dashboard with your head. Um, so he was padding dashboards for safety. Um, it had a, a new fan, fan dangled safety feature called safety belts, where you put a belt on and you buckle it to prevent you from going through the windshield. And then in addition to that, it had a pop out windows. So if you were involved in an accident or a rollover or something to that effect, the windows, the rubber was designed, to, the windows would pop out, which once again was cutting edge. But, um, so the punchline to this whole deal was, uh, there's not very many of those. Um, he was supposed to make a certain amount of them. If you watch the movie, you'll understand. And, uh, you know, whatever, he got shut down. But the cars were cool, any way you want to slice it. Um, you know, my arm's getting heavy. Let me get uh, John again to hold this for me. John, hold this for me. This should work.
Okay, so here's the deal. All right, so uh, I don't even know if I'm looking at this thing. So years and years ago, uh, early 90s, I got a phone call. Well, first of all, I drove around in an Astro van working at body shops and, uh, and um, body shops and where else did I work? Oh, people's homes, home garages, stuff like that. So uh, I get a phone call from a body shop in Hermosa Beach. It's on Cypress and 6th Street. I know the area because I went to school in Hermosa, like middle school and stuff. It's where I learned how to surf, where I learned how to skate. All the trouble I got into was in Hermosa Beach. And uh, so I knew the area. I'd bombed that hill many times when I was younger. And uh, I get a phone call from this body shop. It's called Tucker's Auto Body. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, that's crazy. And this is way before I knew anything about Tucker. So uh, I roll down there and I see a body shop that looks relatively new, like fresh paint and everything. And somebody had painted this picture of a Tucker on the side of it, the, the car. And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, it's an old car, that's cool. So I walk in there, the place is spotless. And I'm like, wow, where, where are all the cars? What am I working on here? And then so I go into the office and it's immaculate. It looks like a recording studio. And I'm like, what is up here? So then the guy comes over, he goes, hey, I have this car back here. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. Um, uh, the light in the middle is supposed to be on when you turn the steering wheel. That's another cutting edge thing he came up with was when you turn the steering wheel, the center headlight had three headlights. The center headlight would follow the wheels. So. He said that worked, but the lights would flicker. And I was like, okay, I, I, I got an idea what's wrong with it. So then I realized to myself that, you know, this is a, a freaking Tucker, limited production. This is, this is a cool car. So I'm more snooping around than I am actually fixing the car. So I find some issues in the back. I make the car so it fires up and starts. I got to fire up the Tucker. I get to move it forwards and backwards. I hopped in and while it's running, I'm turning the wheel. And then I have him come move the wheel. I take the headlight apart. I see just how everything is done. Mind you, this is all one-off stuff. Every bit of this car was built by hand by a particular person. Um, so, I mean, I was just jazzed to be able to work on the thing. So um, I figure it out. I find all the problems. I solve everything. It takes me, I don't know, it didn't take me very long at all. And then um, I tell the guy, hey, you know, honestly, I've only heard about these cars. I've never actually seen one in real life. Uh, I'm not even going to invoice this. So I appreciate it. I believe he gave me some sort of a tip or something. And... Uh, uh, a cash tip, I, I guess I should clarify that right now. It was a cash tip that he gave me. And uh, and then um, I took off. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, like this is like weeks later, I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is crazy. I, I worked on Tucker, I've told the story to a couple people. You know, they're like, oh yeah, Tucker, sure, sure you did. And so I go, you know what, I'm gonna get one of the disposable camera. I think it was a 110, you know? And uh, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna snap some pictures of this thing. So this would be my first experience with a selfie. And uh, I uh, go back down there with this little disposable camera and there is like, looks like a chain link fence around the driveway. So you can't even park on the property anymore. And then I look at the front gate, you know, the front door, I think there were double glass doors and there was a chain around it, a big old lock. And I was just like, wow. Well, my other buddy, he had an auto parts place right next door, which is like an artist commune or something now. But I go over there and I knock on the door. I go, Hey, what happened? He goes, Oh man, that's the craziest thing. He goes, they, uh, they, the cops raided the place and then DEA was here and the feds and you know, the guy went away in handcuffs and the cars, everything in the place was taken away like evidence and towed out of there. And I was like, wow. I, I, and I go, what about the property? He goes, oh, he owned the property. They've confiscated the property. That's why the chain's around and they don't want nobody going in. I was like, that's, that's crazy. So that, was, that was me trying to break in right there. Let me give him a second to shut it down. Hold, please. Okay, thanks for that, Mr. Alarm. So um, either way, they raided the place. They uh, you know took everything, locked the place down, confiscated the guy's property. And then, uh, so I, I never got a picture with it. So I never really could back it up. But then recently somebody texted me and asked me if I knew anything about Tuckers. And uh, I think, I, I know that the guy who texted me doesn't have a Tucker, he was just curious about it. So it brought to mind this story. So I figured I would share it with you guys. 
um, just some shenanigans I went through when I was younger. Um, this was all early 90s, and then uh, the punchline to this whole deal was I, I oh, so that's the thing. Um, I, miss, I miss this part because of the alarm. So I find out later that the car that was impounded from the drug guy, whatever he was doing, I don't want to make the wrong guy angry here, ended up in the Smithsonian because it was confiscated by the DEA or whatever. And I was like, well, you know, that's kind of cool. I worked on a car that's in the Smithsonian. And then I'm thinking, well, I can't really back that up. I can just say I worked on it. They only made, like I said, 40 or 44 of them, or I don't know how many. And uh, I was like, how do I know it's the one I worked on? So I Googled Tucker and Smithsonian. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll put the video insert right here. Well, right at the end of the video. And the craziest thing ever was the cars there and documented into where they got the car is all part of the description of the car in the Smithsonian, which was kind of cool. So, uh, so I can actually say, all this was a roundabout way of me telling you, the long way of me telling you, I worked on a car in the Smithsonian. So um, that is a goal. So check that off the box right there. Um, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. You've been, thanks a lot, you guys, for watching this video. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, following me. I appreciate you sharing my silly videos and stories. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. Stay safe out there. Don't get caught if you're not staying safe. And uh, see you later.